White Forest Lawn, the burial grounds of notable celebrities like Michael Jackson and Carrie Fisher. And among these stars is the final resting place of another trailblazer, the first Asian female pilot in the U.S., Catherine Sui Fun Chung. Dubbed China's Amelia Earhart, Catherine defied racial and gender boundaries in American aviation and society. She flew with the Chinese Aeronautical Association of Los Angeles and the legendary 99s, an all-women air group founded by Earhart. Aviation historian Janet Benarek explains how special Catherine was. During the Golden Age, uh, the 20s and the 30s, at best, women made up about 1% of the licensed pilots in the United States. And of those, women of color might have, if you put everybody together at its height, approached 1% of the women pilots in the United States. But Catherine didn't just fly. As a barnstormer, she learned stunts, including spiral diving, inverted flying, and snap rolls. When she performed, you'd look up to the skies and see her death-defying aerobatics, captured here in this 1930s newsreel from one of her air shows. The public was fascinated by women pilots. They were unicorns. They stood out. It was very exotic to see a woman pilot. That was something very, very different. Planes grasped Catherine's attention as a teenager, never one for tradition. She knew that she would eventually be behind the controls of this new technology. Her story is that she came here in 1921 and her dad took her to the airport to take driving lessons. And so she saw the planes, biplanes taking off and landing and got excited, inspired. Oh, I want to fly. I think I'd love to be a pilot. But obviously this was way ahead of her time. Uh, Amelia Earhart hadn't even come along just yet. But Catherine's dream to be a pilot had to wait. Despite her interest in aviation, life got in the way. She was focused on studying music at the University of Southern California and the Los Angeles Conservatory of Music. She then married her dad's business partner and became a mom. When she finally decided to pursue her passion for flying, she faced some turbulent skies. A person of color, uh, male or female, would have had to search, and probably for a long time, to find an instructor, to find a school that would uh, admit them um, and teach them how to fly in the 1920s and 1930s. Catherine was determined. In 1931, about 10 years after her arrival to the US, she signed up for flying lessons at the local Chinese Aeronautical Association and learned to fly fleet model biplanes like the one you see in front of you. In 1932, after logging just over 12 hours in the air, Catherine earned her license, officially becoming the first Chinese woman pilot in America. I don't see any valid reason why a Chinese woman can't be as good a pilot as anyone else. We drive automobiles, why not fly airplanes? Catherine's next goal was to open a flying school for women in China. Donations from the Chinese community helped buy a plane for the school, but it was destroyed in a crash that killed her cousin. That same year, her friend Amelia Earhart disappeared and her father fell ill. On his deathbed, he begged Catherine to quit the dangerous sport of flying. At 38, she finally agreed and hung up her wings. But her legacy lives on. Two statues were built to honor Catherine in her hometown of Enping, China. She was inducted into the Women in Aviation International Pioneer Hall of Fame, and the Smithsonian recognizes her as the nation's first Asian aviatrix. Modern-day Asian women pilots are continuing the work Catherine started, including renowned aviator Julie Wong. In 2016, Wang became the first Chinese pilot to fly solo around the world. If women flying solo can help break the stereotype that aviation is a male-dominated industry, 
If I can become one of those women to break the stereotype, I'm happy to see that happen. There's still a long way to go in breaking gender restrictions, but I think Catherine Chung's achievements in aviation are meaningful and groundbreaking. We're just outside the Los Angeles International Airport. If you look down on the sidewalk, you'll see Catherine's plaque from the Flight Path Walk of Fame. It's just a few yards from her fellow 99 and friend, Amelia Earhart's. Catherine overcame both racial and gender barriers in a time when women, especially Chinese women, were expected to be meek and quiet. If you can see it, you can be it. To get more people of color, both men and women, interested in becoming airline pilots, they have to be able to, to see themselves in that role. This year is the 100th anniversary of Catherine's arrival in the U.S and only 2.5% of airline pilots are of Asian American or Pacific Islander descent. When less than 1% of licensed pilots were women of color, there was Catherine, an unsung hero who faced obstacles head on and blazed a path forward for future aviators.